Hello there people, welcome to uh, Central Committee of Ex-Muslim in Scandinavia TV program. Uh, this is Milad Rasai Manesh, of course, the spokesperson of the CCES. Uh, in this program, we have a very special guest, uh, Magus, from the uh, Iranian black metal band Mok, uh, has, has accepted to have a short conversation with me about the band, uh, the situation uh, he been experiencing, and the problem uh, he had in Iran, the things that he's doing currently, and the situation is banned, uh, the situation the ban is experiencing at the moment in Germany. Uh, Magnus, if you hear me, uh, I would like to in, uh, I would like to say thank you for accepting my invitation to have a short conversation with me. Greetings, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, at the beginning, I would like to uh, uh, say um, greeting for the Nauru's and, uh, and as, as an Iranian band, we like to celebrate it. Thank you very much. As you guys most probably know, this is the Persian New Year. Uh, we're celebrating uh, in Iran and the rest of the countries in, uh, in the world. Of course, it's like Nauru's is somehow affected by the coronavirus, but still so many people celebrating it. All right. Let's talk about the band, Mog, the Iranian black metal band. How you introduce yourself? Who are you guys? And like where the idea came from at the very first point to um, actually organize the band? Um, my name is Magus Faustus. I'm a former of the band Mog, which is uh, Persian black metal or Iranian black metal. Also, uh, we define as uh, anti-Islamic black metal or oriental black metal also. Um, occult black metal. Um, we formed in India, uh, in, in the pagan uh, lands of India, and before of that uh, I was in Iran, I had other bands and we do the performances and recording. So due to some problematic uh, representation of the music in general and in black metal style, uh, I get to really nasty situations, which I end up in jail, and I experienced torture, and um, and and that was really dark times for for presenting art in Iran. And when I left to India, I mean left, I ran away to India to refuge there. I thought, oh, maybe it's the time to think serious and form a serious black metal band. And that was the formation of Mok back in 2006, and it's happening in 666. It was 6th of June. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I kind of like the like uh, the coincidence of 666, the date actually organized the band with the number. Um, I kind of also like what you said about the uh, sort of genre of the band is like anti-Islam sort of black metal, which is can be seen some sort of uh, like a new thing. Like, you know, we have like a symphonic black metal, uh, melodic black metal, but anti-Islam is something very unique which Mok is playing. The question would be, why black metal? Like, what is special about this specific genre of music, you think? Uh, black metal, in general, is a kind of lifestyle. It's, it's, it has many uh, perspectives and aspects. The first thing is the meditative mood, the relaxation mood. And it lets you go inside your inner self down deep. And the second uh, point of it is a reflection outside. It's so loud, it's so fast, and it's so extreme. Uh, because you can express your inner self through the high pitch vocals, you can play the, the hardcore riffs and the fast drumming. It's a, the way of expression. So when you're against something like a big virus, like Islam, you need to represent it in black metal form. 
that makes sense to me. And that was first idea to, uh, to express as a story what's happened to us, what's happened to me, what's happened to the country, what's happened to the world, you know, how to clean up this virus is not the easy form. That's way, that's the way with, with, without we can represent it as a extreme black metal genre. Yeah, the, the thing is, um, I'm pretty sure you have been experiencing like a, such a difficulties, like a very sad times and period in Iran under the government of Islamic Republic. Um, what are the challenges, what are the problems an artist like you would face if you, like, and the people like you, would like to have a black metal or a metal band in general in a country like Iran, what are the difficulties you think uh, they're supposed to be prepared for? It's, si it's simple, it's easy, it's impossible. Music in Islam system is forbidden. And uh, it's, it's a complicated uh, rules, you know, tr imposed through humanity. And it's, it's not fair. I mean, when you go to the women right, you go to the man right, you go to the drinking. I mean, this is, this is so childish and stupid, which they impose to, to lots of people and, and, and give them the, this, this opportunity to, be, to take them stupid itself. Uh, uh, would you repeat the question? I forgot the part. The question would be, what are the challenges <coughs> an artist would face to like to uh, be active as an artist in a country like Iran? Uh, yeah, it's impossible. It's, it's like death. You need to accept death to start this kind of genre in Iran. Uh, you know, Iran, we lost our country many years before to, through the Islamic uh, uh, people. And, uh, and it's not easy to take it back. And uh, with, with the current situation, to have an idea about uh, black metal or metal even in a genre, or I can see in different genres and art expression. It's forbidden. You end up in jail and you will be, it's like a suicide plan. So mm -hmm. uh, I remember the, the, the time I was back in Iran having long hair, having earring and having tattoo was super crime. And, and uh, it, it's, it's a crazy, I mean, when I try to explain it to Europeans, they, 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 they think I'm lying, you know. Yeah. They cannot imagine which, which situation is that. Yeah, I personally have the same experience, actually. There was, like, so many documentaries and, like, a TV programs, propagandas by the government saying, like, you know, metal people, metalists, and specifically black metalists, are Satanists, and they like, very bad people. They kill, they, like, uh, commit so many crimes. And, uh, I, yeah, make sure, like, you know, it makes sense uh, because of this propaganda, the situation is really tough, and of course, the law bans uh, our artists like you to be free to do whatever you want to. The other question would be, um, why are you so anti-Islam? It makes sense, actually, because like we've been like born and raised in Iran under the Islamic government. But I would like to know about your perspective, why you guys from the band Mok are so against Islam. Um, we experience really hard times because of Islamic rules. We cannot express our lyrics. We cannot play music. I mean, this is, this, this is really sucks. And for having guitar, for having jam with your band in your underground, we take to the jail and we came up with broken bones. So we, we try to express our, our feeling about what happened to us what Islam did to us, and we, we are not happy about it. And I'm the lucky one is outside the country. There are many people I'm aware of, they cannot reveal the name or identity. They're going truly underground, and they risk their lives, you know, back in there. Not in Iran, in the whole Middle East. Um, it's not easy. Uh, we are part of the big establishment of the Arabic anti-Islamic legion, uh, which is uh, the, 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 black metal, the anti-Islamic black metal bands from Iraq, Bahrain, Syria, Saudi Arabia, you name it, all the region. And we form this union to, to have a voice. And it's not in Iran, it's all the Islamic countries happening. For, 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 I mean, this is serious super crime.
you know, to, to, to be, have an idea of black metal, to think about it, to play about it, or to want to express it. True. Let's talk about the band, the band itself. Uh, I've noticed like you guys like kind of have like mixture the contents of the Asian Persia Emperor uh, with some new content. Uh, I've noticed you have a female artist on the stage. Uh, she does the summer dancing on the stages. Basically, people can simply like you know go on YouTube and watch some of the videos, some of your performances you've done before. Uh, why the P Asian Persia is so interesting for you guys? Well, it's, it's so simple when you start to read the history. The history begins with the Iran civilization. And that's the only civilization the Earth experienced that. Uh, the, the, the date we're talking about is back to 40,000 years old. This is our tema, our lyrics and musically expression. Uh, the, the whirling dance you saw um, that we, our performance did was one of the ancient atheistic nihilistic rituals. Um, and, 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 but now you saw in the, these days with a different name and form and, and backup religion or something, which it, this tema take us to the occultic black metal uh, perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. In occultic black metal uh, genre, we, we go back to the history and we dig the elements of the native Persian, Iranian uh, elements. And we try to uh, disinfect it with the new modern uh, virus religion. And we try to pure it, purify it and represent it. Most of the rituals that we do and we research, it, it takes years to, to disinfect it from the current uh, wrong uh, religion idea. True, actually, like <clears throat> the genre of male or black male, I would say is still very male dominated, but you have a female artist, which is very interesting. Uh, basically, like, you know, the bands coming from Iran, which has like, you know, Islamic dominated sort of rule. Women are very deprivated in that society, but we see the Iranian or you know, Persian black male has a decent female artist on the stage, which is very, very interesting. And I think it's a very powerful feature of the band. Um, let's talk about your, like the album you've been released so far. How many albums you've done uh, so far? And is there anything special or specific you, you would like to talk about the albums you've done so far? Well, uh, from the beginning, we has no record label. So we released few or five uh, full length, few demos. And uh, later we get the American record label and now we are running by the Swiss record label, which uh, in general, I think we have nearly 20 releases to, through the tape, demo, live albums. And Such an band. active band. Yeah, it's like too many albums <laughs> and EPs. <laughs> well done indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is our mission. This is our feeling. This is my expression of life. I need to fight for something. I lost my, my, my young hood. Uh, I lost my country, I lost my parents, so I take it as a mission, artistic mission. Uh, the last release we got is in 2020 in a, a LP uh, vinyl version, which called Nuk Mena, and uh, this is one of the most uh, strongest uh, anti-Islamic uh, ideology that we represent on it. Okay, very sweet, actually, I would say. Um, the next question would be, uh, I know like uh, you guys have been participated in a documentary about the band. Tell us more about the documentary. What's that about and where the idea come from? Um, the idea was uh, from the beginning, back in Germany in 2012, there are many directors coming to us and ask about ask a little short interview. And most of them, get really interested to release something really long and deep. A uh, few tried, couldn't success, but uh, there, there is a, a team from Finland. They, they, they are really serious and really good people. They make the documentary, take like three years to shoot and cut and edit. Um, now it's ready uh, next month uh, or in May, I think. Uh, it will be uh, first screen uh, uh, in, in uh, cinema. 
and later we go to the film festivals and later uh, which country is this going to be broadcast like you know which country your film going to be on the cinemas uh, uh begin with the berlin as our current situation is uh, we're going to go to paris and uh, finland and norway that's a program plan as i know the documentary called persian black metal story which is my life story lifestyle through the iran india and germany and the bands and and story of tortures how i get tortured how i get into jail how i run over and and so on you know very interesting uh, the second question the, the next question would be um how you see your role uh, in fighting against uh, political islam or like islamism in europe or and middle east and in iran uh, like the islamic government of iran always trying to provoke a specific sort of culture uh, implemented to the Iranians, they're always trying to say like Iranian are Muslims, they really believe in Islamic uh, rituals, uh, they practice uh, Islamic rituals, and the reason the government are Islamic is because the Iranians are Muslims. Um, obviously, you're not. Uh, how you see your role, uh, the things that you're doing in the process of fighting against the Islamic Republic of Iran and the global political Islam movement? Uh, correct. I, I need to um, uh, say something. I have a, a Zarathustrian background, mm -hmm. which from my father, I, I get through this ancient uh, wisdom and knowledge about ancient history. And I need to correct one thing. You, you mentioned Islamic rituals. Um, Islam is a fake, fake system. It, it's not even a culture. It's, it's nothing. It's just a political game, which try to fool people and, 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 and rule by them. So uh, Islam has no rituals, Islam has no, no history. It was all, all blood and it force, and it's, it's really act like a big virus, forget about Corona. Um, it's not easy to fight back because uh, it's written and documented well by one of the ancient pioneer of Moghs, uh, it's called Salman which is so complicated and by detail, which we need long decades to fight back of this virus and save the humanity. It's, it's not easy to, to... As an artistic way, I mean, I'm so speechless. Uh, maybe I t take the guitar down, I take the gun. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. One last question. Uh, basically, uh, the last question uh, would be um, uh, how can the audiences of this program can communicate with you guys where your songs and the stuff can be found, downloaded and be listened to? And the second part of the question would be do you guys have any upcoming events, any live performances in Europe or like North American countries? Um, yeah, definitely we will have show after this uh, Corona uh, situation. Uh, well, uh, we, we might back to Norway and Sweden. We be talking to get a little Scandinavian tour uh, starting in Finland, uh, but it still is not planned because of the current situation. And we're gonna be touring Europe. Uh, there is a Facebook page for more. You can see the updates and plans, uh, albums, uh, some of them uh, you can buy from the record label or the band itself. And, uh, and for uh, Instagram, uh, is, um, ID is Mog Army. You can communicate with me there. And the Facebook page is banned to all the Islamic countries, which we get reported and all of our lyrics, videos, pictures get deleted by this uh, nonsense algorithm of internet. Uh, so if you are from Islamic countries, you cannot access the Facebook, uh, even in YouTube, if you search, you will see the uh, shows, songs, whatever we are uh, allowed to release, but the rest is on the record label. My guest from the band, Mok, thank you very much for having this conversation with me. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Tamu.